Hey everybody, welcome back to TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Again, it's TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you follow me on social media. Uh, you can call or text me also anytime I do consulting. Or I can just talk to you, all right? 949-415-6256. Um, uh, you can also shoot me a text if that's easier. Sometimes that's easier for me for sure, uh, especially if you just have a quick question. 949-415-6256 or email dan at theclinicaltrialsguru.com or follow me on any social network so all the links will be underneath this YouTube video and if you're on my blog just go to my bio page and you'll find it there right so today I got a question from someone who's curious to learn a little bit more about the different types of remote slash centralized monitorings that are actually being used out there in the wild today. So they really vary, all right? When it comes to remote monitoring, we're so, it, it's essentially still in its infancy. Um, we at one of my sites are barely just now in October 2015 experiencing our first remote based, remote monitoring trial not to be confused with the risk-based monitoring, which I've done a long article on Intralinks, a Collaborista blog about the difference between remote monitoring and risk-based monitoring. Uh, I've also done a video on it to explain the differences. Risk-based monitoring has always been around. It's just getting a lot of attention lately because of remote monitoring, which is just a monitoring style slash strategy where instead of having the monitor come out physically come to the site they will go on a web portal a secure web portal obviously where they can look at the documents much like Intralinks Via okay and Intralinks Via is one of the companies out there one of the first ones to market to come out with a product specifically for life science companies uh, with a strong emphasis on remote monitoring Right. So, but there's other vendors too. And full disclosure, they are a sponsor of the show. Okay. So, there are different kinds of platforms out there because, like I said, it, we are still in the infancy of remote monitoring and centralized monitoring. Uh, a lot of CROs have created their own platforms. Um, so, one of the big ones, and I'm not going to mention any names. But one of the big ones the one that we're, that we're starting to use internally, they have a pretty sophisticated system where not only do you upload your source documents, much like you would do in Intralinks Via, but you also have a quick access to your medical monitor. So you can send your medical monitor a, uh, perhaps you have a clinical question to ask the medical monitor and you don't want to call. You're just logged into your virtual workspace or your platform and you can send them a quick email or chat right there or you can even request for them to give you a call so you no longer have to go leave them a voicemail or send them an email you can just do all of these things from within the portal the online portal for remote monitoring now we have some now that's a pretty sophisticated one right just like via and another aspect of this remote monitoring from the more sophisticated portals is the investigational product review and drug accountability. So there's actually ways to, they have specific, uh, kind of like a database where they can capture the IP accountability from a subject, much like you would do in the EDC. You'd actually be able to do it in this virtual workspace. So there's one CRO in particular that ha is working on this, um, at least it's tentatively being scheduled to be rolled out on some of their upcoming protocols. Uh, so drug accountability is going to be amongst the um, areas where these sophisticated remote monitoring platforms are going to be help out. Another one, and I've written an article on Intralinks, is archiving. So since you're already uploading all the source documents to the cloud, essentially, uh, that may eliminate the need for archiving. Uh, study documents, right? Like actually shipping your do your archives to Iron Mountain, you have them all uploaded in the cloud. Hopefully, we can make a push for this. We the sites where we can eliminate the need to actually physically 
archive the files and maybe we can ship them back to the sponsor or destroy them since they're all uploaded to the virtual workspace. Um, so I haven't seen that yet, but that's a desire that myself and many other people in the industry are really hoping for and hoping that we can have um, some silver lining to the remote monitoring because remote monitoring at the end of the day is a lot of work. It does put a lot of the work back onto the sites. So yeah, we don't have the monitors physically coming into the office, but we have to have our coordinators scanning items, scanning documents. We need really good scanners uh, for this. I mean, it sounds it sounds like a minute detail that uh, is not really of importance, but it actually is. You need to have a human being there to scan these documents, and it just gets tedious after a while. So you need to pay this person either by hour or salary. So I think the archiving benefit would kind of offset the cost to a lot of these sites and that's something I'm hoping we can get make a push for in this industry and I haven't seen that incorporated in any of these newer remote monitoring tools but I'm definitely making a push for it on my end through Intralinks Via and I'm hoping that sponsors and CROs are going to see that this does indeed make sense why don't we do this um, because the sites do have to work a little bit harder with remote monitoring uh, it just takes a lot of time to scan documents, right? It sounds like a, such an easy thing to do, like you don't even think about it, but somebody has to actually scan all these documents. Some of these source documents have staples in them that you've got to remove and then make sure they go through the feeder. And as those of you who work in the office know, it doesn't always work the first time when you take a staple out. Sometimes the papers remain stuck together. So it could be a potential nightmare for a lot of sites and uh, I don't think the quality of one remote monitoring portal versus another is going to ease that burden. I think what can ease that burden is giving the site something else that they can benefit with, maybe on the back end, like archiving, um, or the fact that monitors don't have to show up to the site, which is also good. So monitoring can actually be done quicker, uh, but Again, the sites will have a little bit more work on their end. Uh, and then at the other end of the spectrum, you have rather archaic systems where sites are literally being asked to fax de-identified source documents so that to some database where the sponsor, the monitor, is going to look at the source documents, right? And then there's a lot of other stuff in between, okay? There are, there so far has been no way, uh, and I've actually talked to some thought leaders in this industry and some actual doers, I shouldn't say thought leaders because they're actually out there building products. There's one group that's working on a product where they're trying to incorporate EDC and virtual workspace uh, in the same platform so that you can not only upload your source documents to it, but then you can conveniently just go to the EDC right there. You don't ever have to leave the platform and enter the data there. Uh, there's even some talk about having the data being auto-entered, but that brings up a whole bunch of other issues, such as the fact that errors, human errors, won't be caught. Because oftentimes the errors are caught by the site from the person who's actually entering the data, when they see that the actual data doesn't make sense from what's on the source document. So sometimes the actual data being recorded on the source document was done in error and shouldn't, be, shouldn't have been recorded. So if you have an autofill feature for the EDC system, uh, you're not going to have this human involvement where you're going to have someone actually looking at what they're entering and seeing if it makes sense. Um, so there's some talk around that, but people are, very smart people are coming up with creative solutions to tackle this uh, remote monitoring slash risk-based monitoring uh, opportunity that's out there right now. So you have the very sophisticated systems where you have protocols, source documents, really easy to upload just like Intralinks via. Um, you can also access your medical monitor. Then some CROs have a chat on there, just like a Yahoo Messenger, or for those of you old enough to remember, 
AOL AIM instant messenger, something very similar to that where you can actually chat with your monitor in real time. And they also use this internally. Um, I learned this from Tiffany Bennett, who I interviewed, who used to be a CRA. And they've CROs have been using these chat systems on their intranet sites uh, for at least five years, if not longer, where they can collaborate internally as a team. Well, now we're having that same collaboration between the CROs and the sites using these same kind of tools and technologies. So, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what you have as far as the remote monitoring portals and online tools that are out there in the wild. Um, it's very fragmented. Every CRO has their own. Some outsource to people like Intralinks. Some create their own. Some do like a hybrid where they use elements of one and another. Um, what would really make things a lot easier for the sites is to condense and combine a lot of these vendors such as the ECG Central Reader, uh, uh, the labs from the Central Labs, the access to the source docs and the EDC, as well as a lot of other things, uh, a lot of other portals that the research sites have access to in any given studies. We probably have access to like 10 or 12 portals and they're all using a different vendor. If we can combine all these into one, and like I said, I know a few people who are working on something similar to this, but we're still a ways away from that. But that is the direction that the industry is headed. Consolidate these vendors into one system and use that. I don't believe a CRO is ever going to have the time, capabilities, the resources, or the willingness to do this, but it's going to come down to some private company that's going to do it. Right? And they will change the game. They will change the industry. So those are just some of the examples of what you can do with remote monitoring tools out there in the wild that are available today. As we start doing more, we will actually um, gain more information about them and we'll be able to see different variances of each of them, different nuances that each have, and we can then incorporate what works, hopefully, if we collaborate as an industry, we being the industry, we can incorporate what works and what doesn't work and just keep improving the products, much like we did with EDC, right? So we're st this is still very new, but these are some of the methods that remote monitoring is being utilized, um, usually just something simple like an internal database uh, where you can upload documents or something more sophisticated like uh, Intralinks Via, where you have information rights management and you can control who accesses and you can actually see who's accessed the files. Um, yeah, so that's what we have right now, all right? Dan from theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Keep your questions coming and take care. Bye-bye.